In this next video of our simple subdivision design, we are going to look at setting up our alignments and creating the profiles needed for our assemblies and corridors. If we have time in this video, we'll do the core um, assemblies as well. If not, if this uh, video takes a little too long, we'll do assemblies and the corridors in the next video. So we have our road center lines. And when you're designing a subdivision, you want to have your center line actually go down the center line of the road. This is where we're building our assemblies from. This is uh, what we'll apply our assemblies to, I mean, and build our corridor from. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually offset by four and a quarter, if we remember our road width. We'll offset this piece here to the inside and this piece here to the inside. And then I'm going to clean it up. So I want to break it. I'm just going to break it from here to here and from here to here. And then I'm simply going to stretch this line off to this side. And I don't think I grabbed the end point of it, so it didn't stretch. There we go. Now these are different offsets, so that might we might not actually stretch that. I'm going to snap this to the endpoint of here, and then I'll snap this to the endpoint of here. I'm going to join these back together now. And the main reason I did the offset was to get this radius over here, because we will not move the center line of our road. I'll do a match properties now. From this line to this line. And then I can go about setting up my alignments now. Besides the two obvious center line alignments, we'll need one here, we'll need one here. We are also going to need alignment around the outside of our knuckle and the outside of our cul-de-sac. Now, the one thing we do need to ensure where we're doing this is that this alignment is at the dead center of this cul-de-sac bulb. So I'm just going to draw a circle and zoom in and zoom in and zoom in as much as I can here just to make sure. And it looks good to me, so I'll zoom extents and I'll delete this line. Now this is for targeting. When we target the center line, it needs to be the exact dead center or it's not going to work for us. So I'm going to quickly create my alignments here, create from polyline. I'm going to do my cul-de-sac one first. I'm okay with that direction, so we'll hit enter. And we are going to name these very descriptively because we have four alignments here. So I'm going to name this cul-de-sac entrance road. Again, no sites. I don't want to put these on any sites. And I'll hit OK. I'm going to uh, do the next one. Main through road is what I'm going to name this one. Again, if we have road names, we will use them. And we'll hit OK. So I got my two main alignments done. Now I'm going to go and do my other two. I'm going to draw these with polylines. And I'm going to snap to endpoints. And I'm going to use the arc second point command to snap to the midpoints and then back to the endpoint. Again, second point, midpoint. End. So I'm basically retracing this curve here. Midpoint, endpoint. And then I'm going to hit escape. So that's the three that we want to do. I will do the exact same commands for up here. We want second point, the mid, and then the end. Oh, I didn't do arc. Actually, we're going to do this one a slightly different way. I'm going to draw a polyline from here to here to here back to here. So again, we can do it this way, or we can do it by adding vertexes, or converting to arc, sorry, and snapping to the midpoints. Convert to arc, snap to midpoint, and then convert to arc snap to midpoint. Either way is perfectly acceptable. So I'm now going to create my alignments from these. Now this one should preferably go the same direction as the road itself. 
So off to the right, I'm going to name this uh, outside knuckle. So we know that we have to stretch to it. We'll hit OK. And finally, the cul-de-sac one. And I want it to go from the bottom left to the top right, so I reversed mine. Outside cul-de-sac. And we'll hit OK. So we now have three, four alignments in our drawing. And we're going to create profiles from these. So under the profiles drop down, we'll create a profile from the surface. I'll do one of them, pause the video, but there's the same steps for all of them. I'm going to do main through road. I want to add my existing ground. Make sure it's using the existing ground style. We'll draw it in profile view. I'm going to name this the same, main through road. Uh, we'll leave it on 10 times vertical for now. And then we'll create a profile view and I'll drop it off here to the top right. So again, go and create the profiles for the other three alignments, and I'll be right back. All right, so I have my three additional alignments created. I got my cul-de-sac entrance road, I got my outside cul-de-sac, and my outside knuckle. And just to confirm that we did these right, properties, name outside knuckle, and 10 times vertical, and then click on the existing ground line itself and I'm going to go and change these in properties. So this is outside knuckle, existing. This is very important when you're designing cul-de-sacs and subdivisions in general is to name everything very descriptively. So I'm just gonna come in and add outside cul-de-sac existing. Cul-de-sac entrance road, existing. This is the existing ground. Main through road, existing. So we have our alignment set up, we have our profile set up. Let's go and just quickly design our design ground right now for these, at least these two pieces. Maybe we'll throw these in as well and then we can move them afterwards. So under profiles, I'm going to create by layout. I want to build it on this profile. And I'm naming this main through road design. And again, very, very, very important. Vertical curves for a subdivision are vastly different than what's for a highway line. So I'm just going to go into my curve settings and I'm going to change my K values to, we'll do it 10 and 10 for now. But let's go to the City of Calgary Urban Publications and look up the actual values. All right, so within the design guidelines, I am on page 107 and we have crest and sag curves. Now our design speed on a residential subdivision road is 50 kilometers an hour. So we look at our K values, our crest K, minimum seven, desirable 10, so we'll, we'll achieve 10. Sag for 50. Headlights control is 11, comfort is 6. So we will do 10 for a crest, 11 for a sag. So 10 for crest, 11 for sag, we'll hit OK. And then we can draw tangents with curves. Now I'm going to snap to the end of my existing ground here and I'm going to again trace it as close as I can, like our highway design, to put the proper so we have, don't, don't have to worry about cuts and fills. So I'm going to come down here, click and create one vertical curve and probably come up towards the end here. And then I'll hit escape and then I'll adjust this a little bit to better match that. Again, just grip editing is fine. So again, very simple for that one. Very simple for all of these really. And then I'll close that and do this next one. So profiles create by layout called the SAC entrance road design and we'll hit OK. We'll draw tangents. We'll probably just draw straight tangents as it looks like it's one consistent slope from end to end and hit enter. Now we are not going to worry about these two yet or actually we can. Um, this video will just be on the alignments and profiles. So I have a way of doing these afterwards that makes um, tying into your road a lot easier.
But let's just go and do these again now quickly. Profiles create by layout. We want outside call this sac design. We'll hit OK. We'll check our curve settings, 10 and 11. However, on the outside of a cul-de-sac and the outside of a knuckle, you're not driving 50 kilometers an hour. So I'm going to lower these so it makes it a little bit easier to place our curves in. We want to draw tangents with curves. I want to go from here to, we'll do the midpoint of that. Oh, that didn't work. So draw tangents with curves from here to the midpoint of that, and we'll go back up. Yes, I know it looks broken right now. However, I want the high point of my cul-de-sac to be in the very, very center. I'm then gonna turn my polar tracking back on and bring this straight back up. So my midpoint is in the center. And the outside knuckle, we'll do the outside knuckle next. Profiles create by layout. Out side knuckle design. We'll hit okay. And draw tangents with curves. It looks like we'll have a curve in the bottom of this one. Now this one does not necessarily need to be in the center wherever it makes the most sense. Finally, I'm going to add the required labels to these. So edit labels. I want to see the lines, two and a half mil. I want to see, we'll do crest curves, two and a half mil, side curves, two and a half millimeters. And I'm going to go do that for all the curves. All right, so we have our grade labels added. Our crest and sag labels added. Like the highway design, we also have to match minimum slopes and maximum slopes for the city of Calgary. However, maximum slope is a lot greater. We can go up to eight to 12%. Minimum slope, I believe we still have to be 0.5%. So this doesn't necessarily work. So I'm just gonna move my PI. And again, if you grab the bottom left triangle, it keeps the slope of the right hand side. If you grab the bottom right triangle, it keeps the slope of the left hand side. This one will allow you to put it anywhere. And this grip here actually changes your vertical curve itself. So not necessarily advisable to play with that one. And same with these grips will change your vertical curve location. And 18 is above 11, so that's okay. But if you manage to change it, we're going to edit profile geometry, click on the grid view button that's right here. And I'll just come back in here and change this K value back to 11. So that was creating the alignments and profiles needed for a subdivision. Again, if you have more than one knuckle, do them all, more than one cul-de-sac, do them all. Uh, show your existing ground. We quickly threw in the design ground. This will become more important later on. And then we'll show you a little trick for actually tying in your design ground to your cul-de-sac or uh, main roads itself. So in the next video, we'll make the assemblies and the corridors.